Welcome to Two Girls One Pod recording from Wurundjeri Land. Welcome to our special best of holiday bonuses. We're reliving our best interviews for the year. And one of those is when we spoke to the incredible Ash London. Oh, love Ash. In this episode, Ash spoke all about her religious upbringing, the birth of her son Buddy, and also gives us the goss on some of the biggest music acts in the world. Like, yeah, example, Taylor Swift, Ed Sheeran, and Niall Horan. Uh, heard of them? For part two of this episode, I'm joined by the wonderful Tanya Hennessy. Tanya chats so openly about her success on social media, including videos with views upwards of 50 million, plus how she is her own worst critic, aren't we all though, and how she has dealt with that over her career, Um, plus a little bit of a behind the scenes of her time in radio, so enjoy that. The one thing I do want to bring up is that I grew up in church, right? Mm -hmm. So for the first kind of 25 years of my life, I was in like happy, clappy. Were you? Yeah. So I grew up with a lot of this kind of, and I'm not saying this is for everybody listening that is a person of faith. It was just kind of the specific strain that I was involved in. There were a lot of strain. (laughs) There's a lot of good stuff out there. There's a lot of shitty stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff would have definitely been upheld within heterosexual relationships whereby the men is a lot of like the the woman can't be hanging out alone with other men and you definitely couldn't be posting sexy pictures. And it was kind of framed around this idea of like protecting marriage and like some things are just for marriage, blah, blah, blah. But I think 99% of the time was really stuff that was only imposed upon the women. Mm. So I think a lot of this actually feels quite natural and comfortable for me because it's what I've grown up with, but it's what I've spent 12 years unraveling and kind of programming, unprogramming, which is like a lot harder than you think. Yeah. So I think a lot of people could kind of justify this in a really what they think is healthy and respectful way. But my issue is that most of the time it's only the women that are expected to adhere to these rules and expectations. And the man is just supposed to be kind of protected from it all. And which I think is really, really shitty. Yeah, well said. Mm. And that's a great insight um, mm. and l- look at it because oh, there were so many things that – and this isn't stuff that my mum necessarily instilled in me because no, she's no, pretty no. cool, it's but it's just – it's the faith. Yes. Yeah. And it's always this idea that, you know, as women we have to kind of be yes. modest and we have well, to most like – Most religions are. Yeah, yeah. About making the woman mo- as modest it's as con- possible. And controlling the woman. And as um, subservient as possible. Absolutely. And I think yeah. when a lot of people kind of de-religify themselves and kind of get to a place where it's it's more about their own core personal beliefs as opposed to what religion has told them, yeah. I think a lot of mainstream religions can actually be quite liberating of women and can champion women, but it is uh, hundreds of years of men kind of twisting it to be something that is quite controlling. So I'm not saying it's actually whatever God you believe in's fault. I'm saying it's probably the men that make it into something because through millennia we've just, women have tried to be controlled because we're so f***ing powerful. So powerful. Yeah. We we can make humans. Ah! That's a really big thing. Can you imagine how I felt when I built a baby yeah. and then it came out yes. of me and it was a baby. Yeah. Like, and it's a proper human. A functioning human yeah. Yeah. who now lives and breathes and talks. I am like, I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. I have a friend who's on Instagram. Her, um, She's just had a baby. Her name's Ray Down. I don't know if you know her, comedian. And she's just, uh, she's so funny, but she's like, if you – think I'm like posting way too much about my baby or blah, blah, blah. She said, you can pretty much get f***ed, but yeah. I, like, I am obsessed with this thing I made. Obsessed. Everything it does, I am absolutely is the blown best thing. away by. Yes. And that's it's funny because when a woman has a baby and a man is in the room, I, I truly believe that's why men weren't in rooms for a long time <laughs> because the awe that they get yeah. from seeing what the woman has to go through to, yeah. to do this. They like I've spoken to husbands or partners that say, I I've never seen anything like it. Like yeah. I've never seen that my I've seen her in a completely different way. Totally. Well I had a C section which means I got to watch my husband's face as he saw them bringing Buddy out of my stomach. Can you imagine? No, I couldn't I'm watching him watch and I'm like loving life, living and yes. loving, loving, living. <laughs> Just like, feeling what did nothing. He look like? Oh. Did he have curly hair? Oh. Yes, darling. Yes, curly hair. And it was. Just, I've never. He just like 
our relationship definitely changed. Yeah, after that. it was yeah. already. And so, great. but so it should, and oh. that's what breaks my heart if it doesn't. Mm. If that and somehow, I love that your friend just said that. Like, yeah. I'm going to do this. Yes, like this is going to sound like the biggest name drop of all, but I don't mean it to be name drop. But after the Harry Styles concert, I was sitting next to Daryl Braithwaite, and <gasps> Harry Styles sang "Horses," yes. and I put a video up, and I guess someone at the label. Because Harry Styles doesn't follow me, but someone at the label obviously mentioned to Harry, oh, Ash was sitting with Daryl. So he responded and it took me how many seconds, Evie, to send him a photo, buddy? 12 seconds. <laughs> Most girls would be like, oh, I'm doing great. Here's some hot photos of me. Yes, or like, and I was like, I'm had a kid. Here he is. Oh, my like, God. I don't care about anything else. All I want you to do is see my he child. See my child. And Harry he saw Styles. it. Did and he, he respond? Said, she said, that is the most Ash London baby I've ever seen because I dress buddy in a litany of colours. Oh, my God. He looked like a drag queen most days. Yes. Like just a little gorman boy. A little gorman boy. He's love fashion it. prince, but I'm the same. Oh, like I, I Love I, it. There's part of me, and I, I show him a lot more privately on my kind of, you know, yeah. the, the green circle because yeah, yeah. he's a baby and he didn't ask for it. But if I, you know, trusted the world more, my Instagram would only be Buddy. Yeah. Because I, he's the best. I get I have two dogs, so oh. and they are my but I birthed yes, them. Of course. And I've birthed all my babies. Like I've had eight babies. You are weird, but how does she do it, ladies and gentlemen? The, I got um a little altercation that just this morning because I have such a massive dog mm. and you know, when you see a massive dog, um, a woman with a pram, she was like, uh, and I just get this mama bear rage oh. immediately, like, don't you Dare. No. Like size, fat shame, et, <laughs> anger, like aggro shame, my beautifully chilled, yes. subser- like yes. subser- just this incredible not hurting soul anyone. of a dog. Just don't do it. And, you know, you'll get the wrath of me. But it was funny because I was at another mother. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mother was like, and she actually yelled at me. Alyssa kind of math style, I have a child. Oh, gosh. So does everybody, though. Like, yes, it's a miracle. Like, but two. If you've got two, absolutely. <laughs> anyway. Who's the best, your favourite artist that you've ever interviewed? Um, it's a tie. Mm. Three ways. Oh, hello. Because uh, I can never d- uh, tell Swift, Ed Sheeran, Harry Styles. Why? Taylor Swift makes you feel like the two of you are best friends and you are on a wavelength that no one else is on and she's just enchanting. Before I met her the first time, I was like, I don't buy it. Yeah, I don't get Taylor I was Swift. Like, not for me. This is maybe 10 years, I don't know, a long time ago, maybe 10 years more. And I walked in there and within 20 seconds I was just like, this bitch is cool. She's cool and right. she's smart and she just only has eyes for you for that eight minutes and you walk out of there and you're like, I'm in. Ed Sheeran does not have an ounce of pomp or ego ego about yep. him. He is he looks like that a normal human being, and yep. you just forget that he's Ed Sheeran straight away. Yeah, yeah, like he is the real deal. And Harry fucking Styles, man, you I just ne- always loved him. You need not say a th- another exactly. thing. I get the Harry Styles exactly. Thing. He is everything. He's wonderful. He's a good everything. dude. Every, it, like, it, from the very moment they put those five boys yes. together, he was such a standout. Yeah. Anyway. Look at him now. Um, are you still friends in contact with any of the celebs that you've interviewed? Well, like, yes and no. We know Harry. Yeah, but we're not friends. We just, like, stay in touch a little bit. But, yeah. like, I would never hang out with him recently. Um, yeah. Just, like... You can't help it. Like, yeah. I did it for so long. Yeah. I've been doing it for so long that sometimes it's, you know, seven, eight times you hang out with somebody. So it makes perfect sense that you you feel like mates. Yes. It's weird. and But it's made me really realise, like, I probably did for 10 years, maybe 300 interviews a year, right? Yeah. 3,000 times. And there's been very few times where I've ever felt like the person sitting opposite me was any better than me or was any different to me because they're just insecure, normal people. Yeah. And the more you do it, the more you realise they've just got a different job to me. Yeah. And it's a kind of job that people care about more. Absolutely. Yeah. Who's the worst? Jeremy Renner. <laughs> really? I, everyone, I've had no bad experiences and I mean that, but everyone I know who spoke to Jeremy Renner and I don't even remember what the junket was for, but I knew like five people that spoke to him that, that day and all of them were like, he's the worst. 
Why? He just didn't want to be there, right. which I understand. Do you think that was just a day? No, for him? I've heard from many people that he's just, you know, that's just his shtick. I've, but don't sign on to yeah. earn the millions of dollars and do the press tour if you don't want to do it. Act like you're liking it. Pretend, which everyone else does. Yeah, exactly. If Matt Damon can do it. Yeah, anyone can do you it. You can do it. The, have you followed his accident? No, something with a snowplow. Yeah, you wouldn't want to follow it because, you know, you've interviewed him and he, he made your day a bit shit. Yeah. I have followed it and it was it's a horrendously amazing story of... Is he all right? Yeah, he is. He is. And what He's, actually happened on the snowplow? It's not funny. I'm oh, laughing. No. I'm laughing because I'm thinking of no. Mr. Plough in The Simpsons. Yeah. Mr. Oh. Plough, Mr. Plough, but neither can that, is that's Mr. Plough. And, and, He's no. Mr. Plough. He has his own snowplough and the, you know how big they are? Big. And he, it just wouldn't go and he put his leg out too and the leg got caught. And Anyway, it ended up going over his entire half, <gasps> left half of his body, squashed him, crushed him. And he's had to learn how to walk again. Good on and him. And he made himself, and this is funny because of what you like, he sounds like an asshole. I wonder whether assholes, you have to be an asshole to do what he's done. He is pushed, like where his physio was would, would be like, Jeremy, take it easy. Yeah. He'd be like, F- you, I'm gonna walk. Yeah, and Tom just, Cruise would be like that. Like, imagine a totally. snowplow trying to take on Tom Cruise. There's no way that snowplow would no never way. exist through sheer willpower. He would just like repel it. And if it did get him, he'd be 24 hours. Like he'd have some yeah, crazy. You know. Easy. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. That, Jeremy Renner has done this amazing recovery. On your jazz. So I reckon that's an asshole thing. Mm, I hate. I hate even telling the story because I don't like being negative about people. Not, but, yeah, but, but it wasn't just me. Yeah. Yeah, and, no. you know. Yeah, yeah. Good luck and, to you, Jez. Yeah, good luck to you. And you're a great actor, but don't do not do interviews anymore. No, yeah. Okay. What's something that people wouldn't really expect from the music industry? For the most part, I think as someone who grew up being obsessed with music and obsessed with the music industry, it really didn't let me down. Right. Once I kind of got in and, you know, at the, at the peak of things, I, I feel like I, I was kind of in the inner sanctum. Yeah. And a lot of it was as wonderful as I had hoped. It's yeah. magic, you know. Like are it's fucking sp- sick. Are you a wannabe rock star? Oh, big time! I always wanted to be a performer, but then in my teens, I had a lot of friends, especially growing up in church, who were amazing musicians. Mm-hmm. So I very quickly realised I don't have the chops to be a musician, <laughs> right. but I want to be around them. Right. And then I realised I was good at talking, yeah. and I thought, well, I'm going to interview them, and I want to be like, I want to bring my love and passion for music to the world. So it kind of made perfect sense. But yeah, part of me. In theory, would love to be a touring artist, but having seen it up close, there is no way I could handle it. You would, yeah. I look at Taylor Swift on that stage every night. If I have committed to have coffee with someone on a Tuesday, I'm I am anxious and stressed yeah, about far. having to go to coffee. Yes. yes, one person who probably loves me and would just forgive me for not coming to coffee. She's got a hundred thousand people a night, yeah. four or five nights a week, that have been looking forward to this forever. She cannot get sick. She cannot. Be in a bad mood. Yeah. She can't be. She has to get on stage and perform. I cannot imagine that pressure. No, me neither. No way. No freaking way. You have to be a certain type of person. Yes, it's the same as um, Olympians. Yes, there are certain people who can do that. Yes, and if you can't, move away. Yeah, move away because it's Step an obsession. Away. Which is why I kind of like Nick Kyrgios when I just see that he's yes. just been like, I'm not going to do that. Yes, and if that means I'm not the best of the best, great. But I'm just not willing to. I've always thought that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like. And we as audiences who are just so used to taking, 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 sucking, taking, yeah. I deserve the best out of everything yes. that I don't even pay for, but I want it. I yeah. the best, I want the most. We need to be more forgiving of people. Well, I think that, you know, people like Lewis Capaldi are really oh. starting to, because we're seeing it now, We that was something we would never see no the insides of. No way. The, the mechan- machinations yes. of what's going on yes. in a breakdown. Did you watch that? Net- I, you did. I, I broke uh, my heart. Well, Bore my eyes out. Like, like, me too. And I watched it with a friend who worked in the record industry for two decades. So, you know, for her it was very triggering. Oh. Like, you know, when he went to L.A. and they sat on the outside. Oh, like, I wanted to punch every single she, one of those yeah, people She was like, face. "This, these are the people I used to have to deal with. And America and is a whole new category. Whole new. The people in Australia are very, very different to that. Very, very. But, but they still have be their the pressure, own of style. Course. Yeah. And she would have to deal with those all Oi. the time. She worked in marketing. <sighs> and she, she, it was, watching it with her was so 
interesting because mm. she could see what was about to happen to him. Yeah. And I said at the end, there was a particular scene where he's in at, I think, Radio 1 and they're like, who's going to get the number one single for this week? And and it was either him or it was Harry Styles. Like it was yeah. – and he got it and everyone celebrated. And I said to my friend, Annie Potatoes, my best friend, what would have happened – if he didn't, Oof. like, what would the everyone standing in this room? Yeah, you know, this these artists are that they're artists, they're geniuses in this really weird way. They're so sensitive, and they've taken this kid who has all he's ever wanted to do and has done is mm. play a guitar and sing really mm. great songs, and they've just like that's so great. We're going to take that and we're going to make it explode, and we've done that. Do it again. Yeah, straight away. Do it again. Straight Do it again away. now. Yeah. Why haven't you done it yet? Yeah, and and the pressure of that. Yeah, it, you can. You're watching him develop Tourette's, develop yeah. you know autoimmune that's the thing. problems. It's not something that he's had all his life and he's hidden. It actually developed. Developed. And you as watch you're it watching it, that's what got me. Too much. Stress. That's what got me. Oh, it's I like, can imagine. we, can we somehow get the music industry to back the f up? Yeah, and maybe I um, think it's happening people, because I think the labels have less and less power now because artists are making their own way yeah. before they've even signed a record deal. Yes, so a lot of those younger artists are coming through, and with the right management, the right help, that's what I was going to say. The right, right you've got to have that right management. Oh, and I see it. Countless times when an artist starts out and you meet the manager and you just go, that is going to end badly. Yeah, you would. And I want to, sometimes I want to pull them aside and go, ditch that piece of shit. Yes. I can't do that. But sometimes you just, you get an, I get an ick straight away yeah, from him. I'm like, go, Rose. Oh. Lewis is amazing. So hilarious. So yes. wonderful. And so, so special. Funny. So special. And you, I love yeah, this, this that. post he did when his new album eventually went to number one. He had, had kind of this like fake hidden camera and he was on the phone and he's like saying in his accent, yeah, can you believe like I did the same f-ing album again, that same sad shit and they've lapped it up. <laughs> they've and lapped it up. <laughs> and then he like hangs up. He's like, hold his number one trophy. Hey, guys. <laughs> so I he's love the, the calling of the bullshit, yes. you know, yep. and him and Niall have this wonderful relationship. Yes. And I love watching them be mates. Niall's yes. another and Lewis is another absolute legend. They, you know, they make the effort to kind of remember the last chat you have and they're legends. That. There are love lots of really good artists in the world. And I think a lot of people expect, they always ask me, who's the asshole? Who's really an idiot? But like, in the thousands of times I've had big names in my studio, I could probably count on half a hand the times I've been disappointed in people. Because I think in this day and age, yeah. if you're an asshole, people find out pretty quickly. They do. And they don't, there's no, they don't you want know, you. Cause you. We get all of you now. Yeah. If you're an a hole, yeah. like we're going to know on Instagram in a day. Exactly. So I think exactly. less and less we're getting those. And more and more, it's just kind of talented people who are willing and strong enough to deal with all of it. All, yeah. And then I think wonderful that we're going to get this new wave of Lewises who maybe can do a bit of a Nick Curios and say, this is what I'll to. give you, but I'm not actually going to do the rest. And I yes. think so they should. You're ahead of ideas and you execute them really well. well like you. Socials are so good. It's like, but you started quite early too. Oh yeah, I've, this is my tenth year on social. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that, that's where you just get, you keep getting better and better and better. Do you think? I don't know. I feel like um, I find social harder than I ever did because it's so much more. There's more creators, and therefore yeah. it's harder to you know, rise to the top. You know, when I when I used to do Facebook yes. videos back in the day, this is like 2015, 16, 17, I was getting 30 million, 50 million, 250 million on a oh, video, right? Shit. So to go from that to like 30,000, I find yeah. very difficult. A little bit of a knock. A little a bit of a knock. massive knock, knock. Yeah. yeah. But that's the reality though. Everyone's getting those views now. Um, right. With the, with the rare few that kind of really hit those wild numbers um it's just harder to get visibility it's harder to be seen but also I'm getting older and my ability and interest in creating yeah. as much yeah. as I was is is significantly less you get an adrenaline uh, rush when you when you create viral content particularly and then after a while you're like I just 
I don't, yeah. I don't need maybe the validation yeah. anymore. Yes, well, that's what I was going to ask you. How do you reconcile that, you know, huge hits to what they are now? And is there an ageing that's come into it as well? Because, you know, you, the more you, obviously, the older you get, the the wiser you get, but also the older you get, the more you know something, your experience is is vaster. So, you know, what used to get you off as far as creativity (laughs) goes and the hunger that young creators have, that would dissipate, wouldn't it? Massively. And I love seeing younger kids come up and I see them make content every day and I'm like, enjoy. (laughs) It won't That's last. Get- Burnout is real. Enjoy your <laughs> depression. That's coming. Um, no, I, 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 oh I joke, but it's you know, like it's no, it, it's well, like anything. It's a joke, but it's. I mean, it's not a joke. It's funny, mm. but it's really true. Yeah, it's f-ing true, and it's also like, you know, first bit of sponsored content I ever did was in two thousand and fifteen. You know what I mean? Oh, wow, yeah. I was one of the first people to ever do sponsored content in this country, wow. which is what a was really it, for? it was for um, <laughs> Sony for One Direction, and then I yeah did you, One Direction <sighs> tickets, uh, and oh, then it was. Did you feel sp- connected to Harry? Like, did you feel there was a? <laughs> you know what I did? Know. It was like the worst thing I've ever done. I took a picture of a $1 bill and put D next to the $1, like the American $1 bill and put a D next to it, like a defamed (laughs) currency and wrote, can't wait for 1D tickets, as if One Direction tickets weren't going to f***ing sell. And I made $20 hairs, literally no money, and then I got taxed on top of it. Uh, You know what I mean? Like who cares? Who was one day hard up for getting ticket sales. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, true. Why did they true. need well, sponsored content? Well, I guess they were just well, f-ing they around needed with it. Tanya Hennessy is what they needed. Clearly, they then, had no problem selling. They just wanted you. Maybe, well, maybe they were just fiddling around with it. And for a budget of twenty bucks, you know, I was happy to put my hand up and defame a one dollar note for it. Uh, yes. And then the next thing I did was a special K ad. Uh, and then what happened was I actually was making so much money on social um, that it was eclipsing my radio money in such an intense yeah. way, like so yeah. intense. That I, I actually am the embodiment of video killed the radio star. Oh yeah, right. But the thing so is, what? I think people no. think because you work in the media, people like hype you up. Yeah, literally yeah. no. The only voice I have in my enough. head is my voice going, "You're not great." <laughs> so if you see me, can you please pump me up? Because the only voice I have in my head is my negative self criticism voice. At all well, times. Yeah, you know what? That's funny. I was going to actually ask you, you know, you you are a funny woman. Sometimes. And you're known as a funny woman. But in real life, you, you, you're you not, you know, you just said that you have this negative voice in your head. Like the funniness obviously comes out of you. But who are you in real life? Like what, what are you like as a person? That is like the nicest question. I feel like I'm going to cry. Um, oh, you can cry. We Please, encourage we'll it. use it's that as, for the, views. as a bit. Yeah. <laughs> we use this as a video. <laughs> yeah, it'll make the promo if you cry. So can you? We'll put it at the top of the can episode. Can you please cry? <laughs> um, I feel like I'm back on I'm a Celebrity. Um, <laughs> actually, I, I, I'm a very um, critical, perfectionistic, uh, workaholic, yeah. very – anxious, uh, very mentally unhanged person. (laughs) And where does that come from? You know, I think it's that I'm gifted with creativity, but I'm also like poisoned by creativity. It's like never ending. I'm exhausted by my mind and it won't turn off. And so I'm constantly trying to feel, I I, want to get the ideas out. Mm -hmm. But, um... Sometimes I feel like I don't have enough hours in the day. My head just, the minute an idea is expelled, I get 50 others. And these are excellent, this is an excellent problem to have. I, I, I know this. Unfortunately, these ideas come at every hour, every day, Christmas Day. I, if I'm talking to someone, I'm thinking about another yeah. idea. Like it's just yeah. endless and it's wonderful, but it's, it's killing me. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Tan, it's a lot. Like that, that, if you haven't harnessed it, 
Yeah, not yet. That's like, do you have ADHD? I don't, you know, which I thought I did. Because that sounds like it. I mean, I'm not a medical professional, but I know uh, my friend who has ADHD and she has so many amazing ideas and she has to go on her meds to harness it. Yes. Otherwise, she can't harness it. And it's yeah. just she can't sleep. She's like on she's hyper focused. She's you know this and that. She can't you know listen to you because she's thinking so much. So you know, and maybe there is a, a level of of something that can I don't know. Yeah, I'll oh, probably like I probably am. I but mean, it would because it is a it's a curse and a, and a um a gift at the same time. Yeah, if oh. you're not harnessing your you know, downloading, like you're constantly downloading, but it's not going into the file where it's supposed to go and, you know, using it when you're supposed to use it. And then you have a critical voice as well, you know, saying, is it good enough? The critical voice, I think people are afraid to have a critical voice. I think a lot of people, especially Gen Z, do not like a critical voice. That's a, a, a very wide overstatement. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean like an inner critical voice? I think it's good to have at all. Uh, both. I think it's good to have yeah. a critical voice when you are a creative, particularly being critical yeah, right. of yeah. the work that you make, but also being critical yeah. uh, of the work that you see and to be like, what do I like about this? What do I not like about this? How could I improve this? What would be my take on this? How could I make this better? What You know what I mean? As opposed to yeah. just going, I don't like it. Yeah, It's not enough to say do you, you don't like you it. Are you Gen Z? I'm a Gen Y. Why? Okay. So you're just a bit older than a Gen Z. But do you have people around you that you can be critical and you listen and respect? Do you have those? Oh, yeah. I don't feel like – I feel like everyone is quite – I'm open to critique as well. I right. like to be. Yeah, me too. I also come from a radio school. You know, you finish yeah, radio. That's it. And in radio, you have a post production meeting, yes. and you have a break. What 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 do they call that? Because I I, I loved that when oh, I was on check? radio. Yes, yes. I loved it because afterwards, I got to be told what was great and what was bad yes. and what I could improve. Yes. And I was like, Am I getting this for free? Like, and I'm being paid Same. for you I to tell love, me how to be better at my job. I love it too. And when yeah. I actually, when I was in Canberra, I did radio in Canberra, breakfast radio for two years in Canberra, and we would come off and sometimes in air checks it's just um, the production, or sorry, the content director telling you, but sometimes yeah. they play the breaks back to you and a break is just like when you speak as opposed to the music. Yes. And then they'll play it back and um, they'll go, they'll stop it and go, here's what you could have done here. Or, yes. You know, and that is hard. And I used to do, in Canberra, we used to have two hour listen back air checks every day. So then when I moved from Canberra to a national show, um, which was just weekends, I had no feedback and it f***ed my head because I was Mm. so used to getting so much feedback. I couldn't work without it and it you took me a really long time yes, yeah, it took a really long yeah. time to get out of the um that wow. system of feedback yeah but you would have had to and then become good at that as well so yeah but air checks they were they're a great thing i think a lot of jobs could use air checks oh my god where, I know. you know with really great mentor and kind of content director or your executive like ep or whoever it is telling you This works, this doesn't work, um, you know, and you have to trust them and know that they've got your best interest and the show's best interest. But it could work in so many industries, couldn't it? You know, but a lot of people, going back to what you were saying, a lot of people can't take the criticism. Yeah, and strange. It drives me nuts. It's a a shame. (laughs) It is a shame. I have so many people DMing me being like, I want to be where you are. I'm like, well, here's some thoughts. And they're like, (laughs) that. (laughs) And And that's not being critical so much as just like not wanting to sort of do the work, but um, yeah, God, I sound like well, that can Kim I Kardashian ask you, quote. Um, <laughs> get up and work, yeah, get and also up. be well, a billionaire. Hey, Kim, Kim Kardashian, can I ask you who who's who do you look up to? Like, who do you go? Oh, that's <sighs> that's who I want to be. Well, uh, in Australia, Chrissy Swan. Yep, uh, I just think she leads with warmth and kindness, and she still. T- is in herself, if that makes sense. Yes. She's not sort of in the industry and sort of lost her soul. She's very yeah. soulful and she's grounded and she's humble and she loves to create. Yes. Um, but also I'm a big fan of Matt O'Kine. I think that he's okay. someone I look to because there's not many people who kind of do what Matt and I do. 
Uh, and I obviously don't do it on the same level as him, but we both did breakfast radio. We both write books for children and for adults. He does social. Mm-hmm. I do social. He writes television. I'm now moving into the space of writing television. Yeah. Um, um, but his balance is probably slightly better than mine. Um, <laughs> internationally, you know, I really like Tina Fey yeah. and Amy Poehler. I think they're like unbelievable and I would love to have a legacy like that. Um, I like David oh, yeah. Walliams. I think he's a really great... Well, that's writer a good, for that's kids. An interesting one. Yeah, he's a very good writer for kids. It, like inconceivably good. Arne Doe is an amazing writer for kids. That's a part of the reason I wrote Stevie was that I couldn't see any female writers in the space, which is why I wanted to add my voice to the space. Great. Now, who, t- tell the listeners, Stevie. If oh, Stevie got kids, is a kids book I wrote. Yeah, I wrote two old, of them. How old children? Um, seven to 12. And it's a mm-hmm. book that was kind of inspired by Moana. I watched the movie. Oh. And she doesn't have a love interest. And I was oh. like, oh, my God, she's just this fierce kid who wants yeah. their own destiny and she's looking yes. for her destiny and she's trying to figure out who she is and what she wants, but there's no boyfriend, there's no girlfriend, yes. there's no whatever. She's just got her own ambition at the, at the forefront and I couldn't see that on the shelves, so I wrote it. <laughs> good on you. And I wrote That's it with so just like good. heaps That's of really women That's really inspiring in it. for yeah. young kids of that age. There's – um. I can't remember what it was called, but it was like South American Disney movie or Pixar. It was Disney. Is it Coco? Anyway. No. No. I loved Coco. It was – it was after that, and it was quite recent. And Encanto. I loved, that's it. I went and watched that, and I loved that it was about empowerment of this kid. We don't than, talk about Bruno. So good. It's just so good. I tell you, and that's had, another f-ing inspiration. Lin Manuel <laughs> Miranda. Like, are yeah. you kidding? I mean, I whoa, get that. King. I get that. King, 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 king. Also, I'm a big fan of. I've gone through a Margot Robbie fan. Um, <gasps> Me too. She produces too. as well. You know what I mean? And she's a very good producer. Girl, that woman can act. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back next week in your ear holes. Please head to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show. Please, please, please. Five stars only. If you've got any questions or just want to get in touch or just touch us, two girls at novapodcast.com.au. <laughs> 